Hello there, and welcome to Field Study, an exploration of food and the landscape. Now today we're here in this beautiful hazel copse and it's early February and we're looking for catkins. Now the catkin is the flowering part of the hazel tree, like this one here, uh, and it comes out before the leaves come out in spring. So you'll find these lovely pendulous lime green, lemon yellow uh, flowering things hanging off of the tree like tails before the, the leaves have even come out. So the European hazel tree, Carillus avalbina, or something like that, is a very useful plant. Um, and that is because of its growing habit. So when this plant is cut down or damaged in any way, it will send up long, straight shoots from wherever it has been damaged. Now, being the clever species that we are, we have used this to our advantage. And uh, we often cut or coppice hazel to make these big stools, as they're called, these big plants that have lots and lots of upright stems. So those versatile upright stems are used as everything from a building material to a weaving material for making traps and baskets and all sorts of things like that. Um, and because of its usefulness, I think that it is often overlooked as a food plant and a medicinal plant up until the nuts appear in the autumn. We're all familiar with the hazelnut. But at this time of year, when there isn't many other tree foods available, the hazel gives us its catkins. So these are catkins, and they're a beautiful, greeny, unripe banana sort of shade of yellow. And if you look very, very carefully, you can see almost like a, a cone-like structure of little flowerlets. And it really is quite beautiful when you get up close. Now, you can eat them raw. Ooh. But I wouldn't recommend it. So in folk medicine, all parts of the hazel tree, from its bark to its leaves to its catkins, are an astringent. So they have lots of good properties for um, curing colds. They are used to treat inflammation and stuff like that. Now astringents make your muscle tissue pucker like that, and you can really feel that bitterness and dryness on the tongue when you eat these raw. So that really isn't a good way to go about having a nibble of these. So the best way to treat these is to dry them into a powder. Now, once they're powdered, you can add them into things like uh, flapjacks and breakfast bars, um, oat-based things like porridges, overnight oats, that sort of thing, just to up the protein. So for people on a low protein diet, be it vegan or otherwise, uh, or if you're just trying to cut down on meat, a good way to get protein into your diet from a plant source that is truly wild and abundant is to use hazel catkins. Then obviously this slight bitterness can be tempered with a little bit of, of honey or anything like that. Sugar, whatever takes your fancy. See the buds forming, which means that spring is well and truly on its way. And uh, when these open up, the young leaves can actually be eaten. They were used as an ingredient in a, a medieval dish called nutai that I read about, um, which sounds interesting. It's sort of like a, a medieval stew. And um, I found one recipe for it in one book, one source. So maybe that's something I can try in the next few months when these buds burst open. It's interesting because the recipe actually calls for a, a large amount of hazel leaves. So I think they were being used not only as a sort of like a green vegetable, but as like a flavoring for it as well. So it'll be interesting to see what the flavor of the young leaves is actually like. So the hazel tree is part of the wider birch family, the Betulaceae, and uh, like other birch trees, it has long been associated with curing colds and helping the immune system. So a tea made of the catkins is actually quite good for the common cold. Uh, and I don't know if you can hear it, but my nose is a little bit stuffy at the moment. I've managed to go all winter without getting anything too severely, and uh, I, can, I can just feel something coming on. So I've come out today and I'm gonna make myself a lovely hazel catkin tea tea um, and hopefully that will uh, curtail the effects of this cold. So the catkin when it first forms on the tree is dense and cigar shaped like this and it is incredibly bitter at this stage. So over time the catkins will elongate as the, uh, the flowering structure opens up so the pollen can escape. 
So just a little word of warning, obviously this is the flowering part of a plant, um, so if you've got a severe pollen allergy or hay fever or anything like that, maybe uh, only try a little bit of this at first or don't pick it altogether. Um, if you're highly allergic to pollen, these are little pollen bombs, so uh, yeah, just don't mess with it. You can also harvest the beautiful yellow pollen as a decoration for chocolates and confectionery. Now one of my favourite things to do at this time of year, or any time of year really, is to, uh, to come outside and make a cup of tea. Uh, and all you need is a flask full of hot water and a cup. It's a quick and simple way to connect with the plants that you're foraging for. And it doesn't involve a big backpack and hiking with cast iron pans and stoves and stuff on your back. So it's always important to take a break every now and again. Uh, so I'm going to sit here and make myself a beautiful hazel catkin tea with some lovely gorse flowers that I foraged for a little bit earlier. I've got a, a video on the identification of gorse and lots of its uh, medicinal and culinary uses and I'll put the link up in the top for you there. And what a place to have a cup of tea. This, uh, this view is absolutely insane. Cheers. It's nice when you make it into a tea. It's subtle, it's clean, uh, it doesn't have half as much of that bitter flavour as it does raw and it's very very good for you. As always thank you for watching, be sure to check out the Field Study podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and hit subscribe for more foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. I hope you're all well, spring is coming. Hang in there. Take care.